Look, of course, that's the reason, uh, you know, if you, the last statement I made is anywhere where customer touches your business in any way, good or bad manner, right, you should know as a CRM practice that do you understand this customer, do you have enough information about it. The social is playing a big role, though to, to us, uh, I think it's still uh, far away from the real value it will deliver back to the organization, but yes, it's a, it's, it's a game which is um, you know, definitely on the radar of every organization, including the vendors like us, right? So we do have the connector, so you know, total, as I said, social CRM is a buzzword today, but if you look at our roadmap, we had developed this capability four years back, right? So, so today it's a buzzword. So now, just to give you a perspective, now if I'm not a perpetual CRM, right, in terms of you know upgrading to my customer, so customers who would have bought a version which was four years back, right, cannot be upgraded if I release a social CRM today, right? And that's the challenge which most of the industries fail. Whereas what we bring in is that even if I have launched a feature or product capability recently, I bring that capability to all my customers which is existing, of course the new customer anyway get it. So the social CRM is there, so we have adopters which are available with all the uh, you know, prominent social uh, uh, you know, sites for example on Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook. Look on the on the pricing side, uh, of course, uh, you know the the uh, Tyson side. We are, we are we would be similar to any any you know A level CR product. So there is no much difference on that. But yes, the final decision at that time is a business call, which depends on various other factors. That you know what is the value on that relationship is there for both the organizations. So so that's a call every organization take at that point of time. On the implementation, it's very difficult to give you any number or also even the time. It depends on entirely what you want to achieve out of it. So it's like this that you may have the best, you know, uh, let's say vehicle, but what do you want to do with that vehicle? You know, so, and what is the infrastructure available for that vehicle? So, so what is the readiness of a customer on that, right? For example, a customer may want, uh, let's say, a lead process to be implemented in four months. But it depends also on customer what's his readiness is, what's his infrastructure available, does he have the people who, you know, if he has, his requirements are documented well or not. And based on that only we do size. So, so it, normally if you go by my experience, uh, when a customer starts looking for a product, uh, there are two kinds of customers, one who would have done their homework before getting into the market and there are some who would not have done the homework, they only know that I need X product. But then when they start talking to various vendors, they realize, okay, they need to document their requirements because they don't know what it is. And it, it is much beyond that what they had thought of. So it, it depends. It can be anything from four to six months or it could be 12 months totally. And the cost is obviously dependent on the size of the work you do. Yeah, but yeah, the, the, these things are very standard in the industry today. So, so that's the way everybody does and that's the way we also do it. Yeah, there are two ways we do direct also with customers. Uh, so, so for example, uh, you know, TCS is implementation which we, we, are, we are doing with UTI is one of uh, the opportunity which we had done with TCS. Mm -hmm. But we also do directly. So, so we do have our own team implementation team to do that. Right. When I say uh, we do with SI partners and we have tied up and we have approached and there are a lot of. Uh, Opportunity. We have worked together uh, both with uh, you know people like TCS, IBM, or Mahindra Serpent for that matter, even Wipro. It is basically a strategy in nature most of the time, right? For example, uh, you know the the TC UTI when we went in, uh, the RFP requirement was not just CR; it was beyond CR. So there was things like on the data warehousing, right, where SI brings a lot of uh, practice and knowledge on that area. And the customer requirement on the RFP was also that he wanted to give the RFP to SIs and not directly to the end product owners. Right? So in that case, strategically, the customer wanted it that way and, and, uh, and the size and the nature of uh, the implementation demanded that SI has to front end it. So we, then that's a strategic call we take at that particular opportunity. Right? Uh, 
uh, then there are other scenarios where uh, you know possibly the public sector organizations they put a lot of keep you know uh, qualifying statements of saying you should be minimum 2000 crore company in terms of size or you should have done uh, similar kind of project in another public sector you know in such scenarios where obviously uh, you know organizations of our size do not qualify directly right and and uh, so it's basically that uh, they want a larger players like ibm or tcs or anybody that size to bid for them and even the overall scope if you look at these public sector units is also large so there are multiple integration points the hardware also has to be supplied with them they also have to manage the infrastructure for them in the five years period of the contract and things like that and there's a data warehousing there could be analytical tools and things like that so then it becomes a combination of you know a consortium of various partners to fulfill that requirement and in that case we also partner with that and uh, so, so it's completely a business call at times you do it directly so opportunity based then not necessarily opportunity in a long term perspective what we are looking at is that as we move to international uh, foreign and we do not want to dilute our focus from product r and d you know we want to remain we do not want to end up end you know this is one uh, i think learning as as we have spent enough time in the industry already is that either you are a product company or you are a services company you cannot be both and i think industry there are enough examples that people have really struggled to keep that division or a bifurcation between the organizations and in most of the companies if you look at have ended up into such a situation where they are confused in a state of mind and say are we a product company are we a services company right so that we are very clear we don't want to end up into that situation so our 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 when i said one year uh, we have started investing relationships with si partners is from the long term perspective but we can only do that very effectively when the si partners have a practice which we believe is very important as far as our product is concerned when they built up a team they have invest, invested in that uh, you know uh, infrastructure to go and do it as a part of service on product or our product that's when i think we would take a back step at the moment i think it's somewhere in between so till the time it happens completely where as a partner starts you know uh, working independently irrespective of uh, we are there or not there then then we would love to restrict ourselves out of the services business there are various channels right uh, of course uh, we we do mailer campaigns to begin with we also do event management participations right whereby we create awareness in the market third is our direct presence people going and you know fixing up various presentations and meeting with our sales team doing that right apart from that partners taking us to various opportunities so there are various mechanisms so, so either of them so, so we ought to also participate in the local regional events right it could be you know organized by a big organizations like gartner or somebody or for that matter it could be also uh, you know from the regional players in the, every every country or every region so, so the various methods which we go by but, uh, we have been growing at a pace of almost 40 45% for last 4 years right and and we are profitable uh, you know for around 25 to 30% in the last 4 years now and we would be our business plan we would be doubling our revenues for next 2 years uh, as per the plan to 3 years we will be doubling every year no in fact uh, as per our business plan till next 3 years our contribution with india would be substantial right still substantial Uh, so I'm not fo defocusing. What we are doing is that we are just making a presence outside India. Also, uh, we are not looking at Europe. Uh, what, what we are current this year, what we are looking at is Middle East, Africa markets, and Asia Pacific markets. Right? Americas, we would look maybe 12 months from now. We can start looking into that. Europe, we will not touch it at least for next 12 to 24 months. Right? Uh, definitely we are not defocusing so what we are doing is that we are building teams which are separate uh, both from the implementation perspective and also from the sales perspective 
so so when i say so it's it's a you know team which would have various uh, kras depending on which region and what they are operating in so it's not defocusing i would say uh, yeah we are limiting uh, you know we, we are limiting in sense that fine we, if i'm doing let's say today 90% from india then maybe i'll start doing 80 85 in this year right from india so so at least for next year we see india still will dominant uh, revenue shares because there are huge opportunities in india look currently with uh, we we are not uh, tied up with any contact center solutions right but if you look at what we have done is that we have already integrated integrated in our implementation with the contact center of customer so customer may have so we have done integration with aspect right we have we have the capabilities to do it with avaya right so those kind of uh, dialers uh, we we do have the capabilities and as i said integration capability and uh, you know especially when you are doing an enterprise implementation integration would be key for success of our product as such so in that case uh, you know the capabilities we bring in terms of integration is huge right and then there's no limitation that we can't do integration with any kind of contact center or any kind of dialer for that matter right so but yes we've not tied up formally with anybody as such so depending on what the customer is using uh, so you know you can do it so there are customers who are using for example gentac as a contact center and we would interface and go and interface with gentac in that case right so and similarly you know a lot of other contact centers so it's a customer's requirement is what we try to fulfill uh, you know we have been working for last 4 years on a new product which is uh, called business next right uh, business next would have various flavors of uh, you know product capabilities right Uh, and and it would be a complementary product to CRM uh, and not a competing product or for that matter a different product which is not in line with CRM. So as I said that on a digital application platform uh, which we have already built in as CRM, Business Next has already been used uh, as a rule engine has been developed on a Business Next, not on a CRM Next. So that's the product, and we will have various flavors of uh, you know one rule engine is one of them, right? and various flavors of uh, you know competencies and product capabilities in that particular platform which would be complementary to crm uh, worldwide it's around 18 billion dollars right mm -hmm. uh, india it's a 100 million uh, dollar market itself on the crm space right to it's growing at a pace of around 15 to 20% every year it is not that big in india but india would big become will be bigger as we move yes if you compare with us it's nowhere if i take to talk about 18 billion dollars market 60% happens from us even today